Rum is a distilled alcoholic beverage made from sugar cane byproducts, such as molasses, or directly from sugar cane juice, by a process of fermentation and distillation. The distillate, a clear liquid, is then usually aged in oak barrels. Rum can be referred to in Spanish by descriptors such as Ron Viajo and Ron or Plus or Minus Ejo. The majority of the world's rum production occurs in the Caribbean and Latin America. Rum is also produced in Austria, Spain, Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, Mexico, Hawaii, the Philippines, India, Reunion Island, Mauritius, South Africa, Taiwan, Japan, the United States and Canada. Rums are produced in various grades. Light rums are commonly used in cocktails, whereas golden, and dark rums were typically consumed individually or used for cooking, but are now commonly consumed with mixers. Premium rums are also available, made to be consumed either straight or iced. Rum plays a part in the culture of most islands of the West Indies as well as in the, the Maritimes and Newfoundland. This beverage has famous associations with the Royal Navy and piracy. Rum has also served as a popular medium of economic exchange, used to help fund enterprises such as slavery, organized crime, and military insurgencies. Etymology The origin of the word rum is generally unclear. In an 1824 essay about the word's origin, Samuel Mood, a British etymologist, suggested it might be from the British slang term for the best, as in having a rum time. He wrote, As spirits, extracted from molasses, could not well be ranked under the name whiskey, brandy, or arak, it would be called rum, to denote its excellence or superior quality. Given the harsh taste of early rum, this is unlikely. Morewood later suggested another possibility, that it was taken from the last syllable of the Latin word for sugar, saccharum, an explanation commonly heard today. The um is a very common noun ending in Latin, and plenty of Latin word roots end in R, so in reality, one could apply this logic to a plethora of Latin words to draw the link. Other etymologists have mentioned the Romani word rum, meaning strong, or potent. These words have been linked to the rung boozle and rum fustian, both popular British drinks in the mid-17th century. However, neither was made with rum, but rather eggs, ale, wine, sugar, and various spices. The most probable origin is as a truncated version of rum bullion or rumbustion. Both words surfaced in English about the same time as rum did, and were slang terms for tumult, or uproar. This is a far more convincing explanation, and brings the image of fractious men fighting in entanglements at island tippling houses, which are early versions of the bar. Another claim is the name is from the large drinking glasses used by Dutch seamen known as rummers, from the Dutch word Roma, a drinking glass. Other options include contractions of the words iterum, Latin for again, a second time, or arami, French for aroma. Regardless of the original source, the name was already in common use by 1654, when the General Court of Connecticut ordered the confiscations of whatsoever Barbados liquors, commonly called rum, kill devil and the like. A short time later in May 1657, the General Court of Massachusetts also decided to make illegal the sale of strong liquor whether known by the name of rum, strong water, wine, brandy, etc. In current usage, the name used for a rum is often based on its place of origin. For rums from Spanish-speaking locales, the word ron is used. A ron or plus or minus ajo indicates a rum that has been significantly aged and is often used for premium products. Rum is the term used for rums from French-speaking locales. A rum vieux is an aged French rum that meets several other requirements. Some of the many other names for rum are Nelson's blood, kill devil, demon water, pirate's drink, navy neaters, and Barbados water. A version of rum from Newfoundland is referred to by the name Screech, while some low-grade West Indies rums are called Tafia. History, Origins the precursors to rum date back to antiquity. Development of fermented drinks produced from sugar cane juice is believed to have first occurred either in ancient India or China, and spread from there. An example of such an early drink is brum. Produced by the Malay people, brum dates back thousands of years. Marco Polo also recorded a 14th century account of a very good wine of sugar that was offered to him in what is modern-day Iran. 
the first distillation of rum took place on the sugarcane plantations of the Caribbean in the 17th century. Plantation slaves first discovered molasses, a byproduct of the sugar refining process, could be fermented into alcohol. Later, distillation of these alcoholic byproducts concentrated the alcohol and removed impurities, producing the first true rums. Tradition suggests rum first originated on the island of Barbados. However, in the decade of the 1620s, rum production was recorded in Brazil. A liquid identified as rum has been found in a tin bottle found on Swedish warship Vasa, which sank in 1628. A 1651 document from Barbados stated, The chief fuddling they make in the island is rum bullion, alias Kildeville, and this is made of sugar canes distilled, a hot, hellish, and terrible liquor. Colonial America After rum's development in the Caribbean, the drink's popularity spread to colonial North America. To support the demand for the drink, the first rum distillery in the British colonies of North America was set up in 1664 on present-day Staten Island. Boston, Massachusetts had a distillery three years later. The manufacture of rum became early colonial New England's largest and most prosperous industry. New England became a distilling center due to the technical, metalworking and cooperage skills and abundant lumber. The rum produced there was lighter, more like whiskey. Rhode Island rum even joined gold as an accepted currency in Europe for a period of time. Estimates of rum consumption in the American colonies before the American Revolutionary War had every man, woman, or child drinking an average of three imperial gallons of rum each year. To support this demand for the molasses to produce rum, along with the increasing demand for sugar in Europe during the 17th and 18th centuries, a labor source to work the sugar plantations in the Caribbean was needed. A triangular trade was established between Africa, the Caribbean, and the colonies to help support this need. The exchange of slaves, molasses, and rum was quite profitable, and the disruption to the trade caused by the Sugar Act in 1764 may have even helped cause the American Revolution. In the slave trade, rum was also used as a medium of exchange. For example, the slave venture Smith, whose history was later published, had been purchased in Africa for four gallons of rum plus a piece of calico. The popularity of rum continued after the American Revolution, with George Washington insisting on a barrel of Barbados rum at his 1789 inauguration. Rum started to play an important role in the political system. Candidates attempted to influence the outcome of an election through their generosity with rum. The people would attend the hustings to see which candidate appeared more generous. The candidate was expected to drink with the people to show he was independent and truly a Republican. In the 1833 Mississippi State Senate election, one candidate, Judge Edward Turner, poured his drinks and socialized with the people. He was more personal and it appeared as if he was going to win. The other candidate, a Methodist parson named Dick Stewart, announced he would not be pouring their drinks and they could have as much as they wanted. Dick Stewart won. Eventually, the restrictions on rum from the British islands of the Caribbean, combined with the development of American whiskey, led to a decline in the drink's popularity. Naval rum Rum's association with piracy began with British privateers trading on the valuable commodity. As some of the privateers became pirates and buccaneers, their fondness for rum remained, the association between the two only being strengthened by literary works such as Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. The association of rum with the Royal Navy began in 1655, when the British fleet captured the island of Jamaica. With the availability of domestically produced rum, the British changed the daily ration of liquor given to seamen from French brandy to rum. While the ration was originally given neat, or mixed with lime juice, the practice of watering down the rum began around 1740. To help minimize the effect of the alcohol on his sailors, Admiral Edward Vernon had the rum ration watered producing a mixture that became known as grog. While many believe the term was coined in honor of the grogram cloak Admiral Vernon wore in rough weather, the term predates his famous order. It probably originates in the West Indies, perhaps of African etymology. The Royal Navy continued to give its sailors a daily rum ration, known as a tot, until the practice was abolished after July 31, 1970. Today, 
a tot of rum is still issued on special occasions, using an order to splice the main brace, which may only be given by the Queen, a member of the royal family or, on certain occasions, the Admiralty Board in the UK, with similar restrictions in other Commonwealth navies. Recently, such occasions have included royal marriages or birthdays, or special anniversaries. In the days of daily rum rations, the order to splice the main brace meant double rations would be issued. A legend involving naval rum and Horatio Nelson says that following his victory and death at the Battle of Trafalgar, Nelson's body was preserved in a cask of rum to allow transportation back to England. Upon arrival, however, the cask was opened and found to be empty. The pickled body was removed and, upon inspection, it was discovered that the sailors had drilled a hole in the bottom of the cask and drunk all the rum, hence the term Nelson's blood being used to describe rum. It also serves as the basis for the term tapping the admiral being used to describe surreptitiously sucking liquor from a cask through a straw. The details of the story are disputed, as many historians claim the cask contained French brandy, whilst others claim instead the term originated from a toast to Admiral Nelson. Variations of the story, involving different notable corpses, have been in circulation for many years. The official record states merely that the body was placed in refined spirits, and does not go into further detail. The Royal New Zealand Navy was the last naval force to give sailors a free daily tot of rum. The Royal Canadian Navy still gives a rum ration on special occasions. The rum is usually provided out of the commanding officer's fund, and is 150 proof. It is consumed on the order up spirits. The order to splice the main brace can be given by the Queen as Commander-in-Chief, as occurred on June 29, 2010, when Her Majesty gave the order to the Royal Canadian Navy as part of the celebration of their 100th anniversary. Rum was also occasionally consumed mixed with gunpowder either to test the proof of an alcohol ration or to seal a vow or show loyalty to a rebellion. Colonial Australia Rum became an important trade good in the early period of the colony of New South Wales. The value of rum was based upon the lack of coinage among the population of the colony, and due to the drink's ability to allow its consumer to temporarily forget about the lack of creature comforts available in the new colony. The value of rum was such that convict settlers could be induced to work the lands owned by officers of the New South Wales Corps. Due to rum's popularity among the settlers, the colony gained a reputation for drunkenness, though their alcohol consumption was less than levels commonly consumed in England at the time. Australia was so far away from England that the convict colony, established in 1788, faced severe food shortages, compounded by poor conditions for growing crops and the shortage of livestock. Eventually it was realized that it might be cheaper for India, instead of England, to supply the settlement of Sydney. By 1817, two out of every three ships which left Sydney, went to Java or India, and cargoes from Bengal fed and equipped the colony. Casks of Bengal rum were brought back in the depths of nearly every ship from India although taken to shore clandestinely, to the dismay of the governors. Englishmen living in India grew wealthy through sending ships to Sydney laden half with rice and half with bad spirits. Rum was intimately involved in the only military takeover of an Australian government, known as the Rum Rebellion. William Bly became governor of the colony, he attempted to remedy the perceived problem with drunkenness by outlawing the use of rum as a medium of exchange. In 1808, in response to Bly's policies, the New South Wales Corps marched with fixed bayonets, to Government House and placed Bly under arrest. The mutineers continued to control the colony until the arrival of Governor Lachlan Macquarie in 1810. Categorization, dividing rum into meaningful groupings is complicated because no single standard exists for what constitutes rum. Instead, rum is defined by the varying rules and laws of the nations producing the spirit. The differences in definitions include issues such as spirit proof, minimum aging, and even naming standards. Examples of the differences in proof is Colombia, requiring their rums possess a minimum alcohol content of 50% alcohol by volume, while Chile and Venezuela require only a minimum of 40% ABV. Mexico requires rum be aged a minimum of 8 months. The Dominican Republic, Panama and Venezuela require 2 years. Naming standards also vary. 
Argentina defines rums as white, gold, light, and extra light. Granada and Barbados uses the terms white, overproof, and matured, while the United States defines rum, rum liqueur, and flavored rum. In Australia, rum is divided into dark or red rum and white rum. Despite these differences in standards and nomenclature, the following divisions are provided to help show the wide variety of rums produced. Regional variations. Within the Caribbean, each island or production area has a unique style. For the most part, these styles can be grouped by the language traditionally spoken. Due to the overwhelming influence of Puerto Rican rum, most rum consumed in the United States is produced in the Spanish-speaking style. English-speaking islands and countries are known for darker rums with a fuller taste that retains a greater amount of the underlying molasses flavor. Rums from Trinidad and Tobago, Grenada, Barbados, St. Lucia, Belize, Bermuda, St. Kitts, the Demerara region of Guyana, and Jamaica are typical of this style. French-speaking islands are best known for their agricultural rums. These rums, being produced exclusively from sugar cane juice, retain a greater amount of the original flavor of the sugar cane and are generally more expensive than molasses-based rums. Rums from Haiti, Guadeloupe and Martinique are typical of this style. Spanish-speaking islands and countries traditionally produce all plus or minus agio rums with a fairly smooth taste. Rums from Cuba, Guatemala, Panama, the Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, Puerto Rico, Colombia and Venezuela are typical of this style. Rum from the U.S. Virgin Islands is also of this style. The Canary Islands produces honey rum known as Ron Miel de Canarias and carries a geographical designation. Canala Section A is a spirit similar to rum that is produced in Brazil. Seco, from Panama, is also a spirit similar to rum, but also similar to vodka since it is triple distilled. Mexico produces a number of brands of light and dark rum as well as other less expensive flavored and unflavored sugar cane based liquors, such as Aquadient de Cool Plus or Minus A and Charanda. A spirit known as Aquadient, distilled from molasses and often infused with anise, with additional sugar cane juice added after distillation, is produced in Central America and Northern South America. In West Africa, and particularly in Liberia, cane juice is a cheap, strong spirit distilled from sugar cane which can be as strong as 43% ABV, 86 proof. A refined cane spirit has also been produced in South Africa since the 1950s, simply known as cane. Within Europe, in the Czech Republic a similar spirit made from sugar beet is known as Tusimak. In Germany, a cheap substitute for genuine dark rum is called Rumberschnitt. This distilled beverage is made of genuine dark rum, rectified spirit, and water. Very often, caramel coloring is used too. The relative amount of genuine rum it contains can be quite low, since the legal minimum is at only 5%. In Austria, a similar rum called in la currency in Durham or domestic rum is available. However, Austrian in la currency in Durham is always a spiced rum, such as the brand Stroh. German rum Verschnitt, in contrast, is never spiced or flavored. Grades the grades and variations used to describe rum depend on the location where a rum was produced. Despite these variations, the following terms are frequently used to describe various types of rum, dark rums, also known by their particular color, such as brown, black, or red rums, are classes a grade darker than gold rums. They are usually made from caramelized sugar or molasses. They are generally aged longer, in heavily charred barrels giving them much stronger flavors than either light or gold rums, and hints of spices can be detected, along with a strong molasses or caramel overtone. They commonly provide substance in rum drinks, as well as color. In addition, dark rum is the type most commonly used in cooking. Most dark rums come from areas such as Jamaica, Haiti, and Martinique. Flavored rums are infused with flavors of fruits, such as banana, mango, orange, citrus, coconut, starfruit or lime. These are generally less than 40% ABV, 80 proof. They mostly serve to flavor similarly themed tropical drinks but are also often drunk neat or with ice. Gold rums, also called amber rums, are medium-bodied rums that are generally aged. 
these gain their dark color from aging in wooden barrels. They have more flavor and a stronger tasting than light rum, and can be considered midway between light rum and the darker varieties. Light rums, also referred to as silver, or white rums, in general, have very little flavor aside from a general sweetness. Light rums are sometimes filtered after aging to remove any color. The Brazilian Canela Section A is generally this type, but some varieties are more akin to gold rums. The majority of light rums come from Puerto Rico. Their milder flavors make them popular for use in mixed drinks, as opposed to drinking them straight. Overproof rums are much higher than the standard 40% ABV, 80 proof, with many as high as 75%. 150 proof to 80%, 160 proof available. One example is Bacardi 151 or Pitara Moonshine. They are usually used in mixed drinks. Premium rums, as with other sipping spirits such as cognac and scotch, are in a special market category. These are generally from boutique brands that sell carefully produced and aged rums. They have more character and flavor than their mixing counterparts and are generally consumed straight. Spiced rums obtain their flavors through the addition of spices and, sometimes, caramel. Most are darker in color, and based on gold rums. Some are significantly darker, while many cheaper brands are made from inexpensive white rums and darkened with caramel color. Among the spices added are cinnamon, rosemary, absinthe aniseed, or pepper. Production method, unlike some other spirits, rum has no defined production methods. Instead, Rum production is based on traditional styles that vary between locations and distillers. Fermentation Most rum produced is made from molasses. Within the Caribbean, much of this molasses is from Brazil. A notable exception is the French-speaking islands, where sugar cane juice is the preferred base ingredient. In Brazil itself, the distilled alcoholic beverage derived from cane juice is distinguished from rum and called Canada Section A. Yeast and water are added to the base ingredient to start the fermentation process. While some rum producers allow wild yeasts to perform the fermentation, most use specific strains of yeast to help provide a consistent taste and predictable fermentation time. Dunder, the yeast-rich foam from previous fermentations, is the traditional yeast source in Jamaica. The yeast employed will determine the final taste and aroma profile, says Jamaican master blender Joy Spence. Distillers who make lighter rums, such as Bacardi, prefer to use faster working yeasts. Use of slower working yeasts causes more esters to accumulate during fermentation, allowing for a fuller tasting rum. Distillation, as with all other aspects of rum production, no standard method is used for distillation. While some producers work in batches using pot stills, most rum production is done using column still distillation. Pot still output contains more congeners than the output from column stills, so produces fuller tasting rums. Aging and blending, many countries require rum to be aged for at least one year. This aging is commonly performed in used bourbon casks, but may also be performed in other types of wooden casks or stainless steel tanks. The aging process determines the color of the rum. When aged in oak casks, it becomes dark whereas rum aged in stainless steel tanks remains virtually colorless. Due to the tropical climate common to most rum-producing areas, rum matures at a much higher rate than is typical for whiskey or brandy. An indication of this higher rate is the angel's share, or amount of product lost to evaporation. While products aged in France or Scotland see about 2% loss each year, tropical rum producers may see as much as 10%. After aging, Rum is normally blended to ensure a consistent flavor. Blending is the final step in the rum making process. As part of this blending process, light rums may be filtered to remove any color gained during aging. For darker rums, caramel may be added to adjust the color of the final product. In cuisine, besides rum punches, cocktails such as the Cuba Libre and Daiquiri have well known stories of their invention in the Caribbean. Key culture in the U.S. helped expand rum's horizons with inventions such as the Mai Tai and Zombie. Other well-known cocktails containing rum include the Pier Plus or Minus a Cola de, a drink made popular in America by Rupert Holmes' Song Escape, and the Mojito.
It is also used in a New Orleans cocktail known as a hurricane. Cold weather drinks made with rum include the rum toddy and hot buttered rum. A number of local specialities also use rum, including Bermuda's Dark and Stormy, and the Painkiller from the British Virgin Islands. Rum is also used to make gunfire in the British Army. Rum may also be used as a base in the manufacture of liqueurs. Another combination is jaja tea, a mixture of rum and black tea. Rum may also be used in a number of cooked dishes as a flavoring agent in items such as rum balls or rum cakes. It is commonly used to macerate fruit used in fruit cakes and is also used in marinades for some Caribbean dishes. Rum is also used in the preparation of rum topf, bananas foster and some hard sauces. Rum is sometimes mixed into ice cream, often with raisins, and in baking it is occasionally used in Joe Foggers, a type of cookie from New England. Tea punch, French Creole for petit punch, is a traditional drink in the French West Indies, Guadeloupe and Martinique. See also Canal a section of Sharanda, list of Puerto Rican rums, list of rum producers, pirate, rum agricole, rum cake, rum cocktails, rum roe, rum running, notes. References, Curtis, Wayne. And a bottle of rum, a history of the New World in 10 cocktails. Crown Publishers. PA 285. ISBN A 9781400051670. Blue, Anthony Diaz. The Complete Book of Sprites A Guide to Their History, Production, and Enjoyment. HarperCollins. ISBN A 0 06 054218 7. Clark, Frank G. The History of Australia. Greenwood Press. ISBN A 0 313 31498 5. Cooper, Rosalind. Spirits and Liqueurs. Books. ISBN A 0 89586 194 1. Foley, Ray. Bartending for Dummies A Reference for the Rest of Us. Wiley Publishing, Inc. ISBN A 0 470 05056 X. Pack, James. Nelson's Blood The Story of Naval Rum. Naval Institute Press. ISBN A 0 87021 944 8. Tanner Hill, Ray. Food in History. Stein and A. ISBN A 0 8128 1437 1. Rora Bohr. W. J. The Alcoholic Republic. Oxford University Presser, Further Reading, Williams, Ian. Rum, A Social and Sociable History of the Real Spirit of 1776. Nation Books, A. Broom, Dave. Rum. At the Ville Press, A. R. Kell, Julie. Classic Rum. Prion Books, A. Coulomb, Charles A. Rum, The Epic Story of the Drink That Changed Conquered the World. Citadel Presser, Smith, Frederick. Caribbean Rum, A Social and Economic History. University Press of Florida, External Links, Rum Basics, What is Rum? Rum in the Caribbean.